What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Everyday Apple Living, your guide to living with Apple every day. I'm your host, Jack. On this episode, I'm going to show you how to set up the sidecar feature on your MacBook Air M1 chip and iPad Pro M1 chip in under 30 seconds. And now that's the first act. The second act, we're going to actually go over the tech and software aspects of sidecar. And the third act, we're going to go over the pros and cons of sidecar. With that said, let's get started. All right, let's see if we can do this in under 30 seconds. You go into system settings on your MacBook Air, you go down to general, and then you go to airdrop and handoff. You make sure allow handoff and airplay receiver is on. And then you go into settings on your iPad, you go to general, you also go to airplay and handoff, and you make sure handoff and cursor and keyboard are turned on. Then what you do is you open up the pages that you want. So let's say, and then you go to the green button in the top left, you hover on it and then you'll see something that says move to iPad. You click on it, you wait about one to two seconds and ba blam It's now on two different pages. Ta-da! So now you can be extra productive while watching my YouTube channel and being on Excel and doing work at the same time. There you go. Now, I don't recommend this if you're the type of person who needs to do video intensive projects. For example, right? So we're just going to play one of my YouTube videos where I unbox. I'm on Google's roof. I've got a new Pixel 7 and I'm about to turn Watch this. In a it's already starting to lag. See, the, the, see, the video isn't playing. Meanwhile, the mouse is working. Yeah. But right there, it's completely lagging. Can't click anything on the right. And this is, I wasn't even planning to have this glitch. It's literally not working. Alright, so I had to stop that because it's literally stuck. And I'm going to go into system settings and basically allow hand, turn off, hand off. Don't allow hand off. Airplay is still on. Okay, but no more handoff. I'm going to try and see if I can turn off the iPad. And it's stuck. So what you do when you're stuck is if you drag up, you'll see continuity. So you just X out of continuity. And basically the page comes back right here. What models of MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and iPads allow you to do Sidecar? Check this out. You need to have Mac OS Catalina or later installed as the software, and you need to have iPad OS 13 or later. In terms of MacBook Pros, anything introduced from 2016 or later in terms of MacBook, but I don't recommend MacBook. My girlfriend's MacBook basically exploded and the batteries expanded, but the case broke. I would not recommend it for anything that's intensive or heavy. MacBook Air introduced in 2018 or later. There's iMac, iMac Pro, Mac Mini, Mac Pro, Mac Studio. We're just gonna start, we're just gonna stay focused on MacBooks and iPads. And in terms of the iPads, basically, in terms of the tech of iPads that allow Sidecar, it seems that iPad Air, third generation or later, iPad Mini, fifth generation or later, iPad, sixth generation or later, or iPad Pro, all models. Some additional requirements for you to be aware of, because I had this trouble as well, you need both devices to be signed into the same Apple ID using two-factor authentication. Sidecar does not support managed Apple IDs. To use Sidecar wirelessly, the devices must be 10 meters or 30 feet and have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and handoff turned on, which you just saw how to turn on handoff. Another important factor that's not mentioned on here at all is that you need to turn your VPN off. VPN on will interfere with the Sidecar feature. So now we're gonna go over the pros and cons of Sidecar. Definitely one of the pros is increased productivity. For example, that like we mentioned earlier, if you're doing Excel sheets and stuff like that and you need to record a lot of data, instead of having to do this a lot and jumping back and forth between screens, you can literally just stay in your screen and then have Sidecar right there on your iPad 
and record what you need to record. Let's say you're doing research on YouTube videos and stuff. You could literally have the YouTube videos move up and down, etc. Yes, there are some people who are going to argue, well, why don't you just go into the YouTube app on the iPad itself and then not have to worry about it. But the problem would be here we are on the YouTube app on the iPad itself. In theory, you could bring your mouse. So here I want to show you we have the mouse right here. You could push it up against the side and then bring it in as well that you can do. You see it floating. You see it floating right there. You pushed it to the side enough but I think the issue is well for example I don't have YouTube studio in here like just so you see on the iPad app itself what you're doing is using an iPad app and on the iPad YouTube app for example as a content creator on YouTube you only have your channel you don't have all the stuff you need to do analytics and stuff, which is why you would need to go back to continuity we're gonna go on that little green button in the top left we're gonna move to iPad so basically, instead of just using the apps on the iPad, you treat the iPad as literally a second screen for your MacBook. So now I can go into YouTube Studio, for example, and I can look at analytics, which you just saw we weren't able to do on the iPad app on the iPad. I totally imagine that if you're like the type of person who needs to do research on one page and then literally type up a bunch of stuff on the other page, instead of having to go back and forth and jump, you could literally just move your eyes back and forth, back and forth and continue typing. It will definitely help increase productivity. Also, the second pro that I deem will help make people a little bit healthier is that you have to move your eyes right and left, right and left when you're doing stuff versus just staying on one screen. Like if you just, if you did not have sidecar on, you're literally just staying focused on this one screen the whole time. So your eyes stay fixed in this much space versus jumping back and forth. I think having that movement helps maintain eye health, better eye health. Also on this healthier aspect, with sidecar, you have to move your neck back and forth to look at the different screens versus just staying in one screen, one look the whole time. So I think that's healthier for your neck and your eyes. The one and only con I see with this is literally only when it comes to video editing. If you're the type of person who needs to do hardcore heavy duty video editing, I don't recommend it only because literally watch, see look, Look, it, it just literally just shut off. I didn't do anything. The mouse is stuck over here and I can't even move it. So it's working on the MacBook Air, but now it's stuck again on the iPad. So literally the only thing to do is to move it. No, see, I can't even move it anymore because it's stuck over there. So the only thing to do would be to literally exit out on the iPad and get out of continuity which brings all of the stuff back. And now let's try to bring the continuity back over to the iPad. And it does. So you see, it gets stuck. And while in the course of filming this, I've already gotten stuck like two or three times. And that's not even doing any work. That's literally just showing you guys it getting stuck. Now imagine if you were on Final Cut Pro trying to do a lot of video editing, heavy duty intensive video editing, and then also checking up pixels for stock footage and other things, or watching other videos as well for research. And then boom, it just crashes. You lose your work, you lose all your data, you, or it just has to reset itself. And it takes like a minute to log back on. So it's it's just decreased productivity in terms of the workload. So I would not recommend Sidecar if you have a MacBook Air with the M1 chip and an iPad Pro with the M1 chip. I would probably use Sidecar if this was a MacBook Pro with M1 chip and up. The only time I would recommend using Sidecar with MacBook Air M1 chip and the iPad Pro M1 chip would be if you're literally doing light work. Let's say you're doing light graphic design. You don't need much. It's literally just photos on one side, editing on the other. That's it. No videos, no heavy duty intensive graphics needs. Then you're fine. Or you're doing homework. You need a book opened up, an ebook opened up on this end, and you're typing up in Word doc on this end. You're fine. It's literally just when it comes to heavy duty video stuff. And you saw we weren't even editing a Final Cut Pro video. We were literally trying to watch a YouTube video with Final Cut Pro open and it just can't handle it. That's why save yourself the trouble and either get a MacBook Pro or use it on an iMac and see if that works or just don't do this at all or do light work that's not video intensive. If you liked the video, smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. At the time of this video, we are currently at 705 subscribers, up from 658 subscribers from the last video. So thank you and shout out to all the new subscribers, to all the subscribers who have been here before. Thank you so much again for watching and supporting the channel. 
help me get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2022. Only 295 more subscribers to go. Let's get it. Woo! This little circle thing down here with my profile picture is actually a subscribe button. If you're on desktop and you click on it, a subscribe button will appear. If you're on mobile, I think the subscribe button will appear too, depending on the version of YouTube that you have. When you do subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure you turn the notification bell on so you get notified when new videos are released. Until next time.